What's up guys, Lloyd here, and today I'm coming at you with a video on the beta for War Within. We are going to be uh, taking a look at Herald as we get closer to the release of the game. I just want to show you guys what a couple of the builds that I think are going to be for Herald, and uh, talk a little bit about Rep Paladin in general. So the first build I'm going to start off with is my personal favorite. So this is Herald of the Sun. Uh, playing Templar Strikes. Now, I think that Templar Strikes and Crusading Strikes are relatively close. However, one problem you're going to notice when you hit max level and get all the gear on uh, Ret in the War Within, and actually for some other classes as well, is that your single target damage is a little bit lower, but your AoE is kind of insane. Uh, so one of the, the directions that the game has gone in for the War Within is attaching cleave to almost everything. And Rhett, pretty much all your abilities uh, have AoE splash damage or some form of AoE. So in order to kind of counterbalance that, the single target, this past beta build, had been nerfed. And um, I think in PvP, maybe just slight over nerfs. But I think Rhett is still in a pretty good place. Um, I place it on, on a relative tier list around a tier uh it's not super op but it's not super weak either and in my opinion that's kind of exactly where i want to be in the beginning of an expansion uh that way you're not really on the nerf list and um you know maybe there's not going to be a ton of your class in general and you get to play the unique spec but i, I don't think that ever happens for it i think people love playing red paladin so let's go over the talents uh the first thing that you'll notice if you've been playing the beta is I'm not Radiant Glory. Now, I think Radiant Glory is a very fun and interesting talent. Uh, however, due to the nerfs to Crusade and Avenging Wrath Might in PvP, it's fairly weak. Um, and one of the reasons that it's weak is that it just inconsistently procs your, procs your wings. So it's kind of tough to build up Crusade stacks uh, or have consistently high, high Crusade stacks. And then if you proc an Avenging Wrath Might, uh, it's only a 10% damage increase, which really isn't that noticeable. Uh, some of you might be wondering, okay, well, let's let's forego whatever the, the value of wings is. Isn't it still good because it procs Sun's Avatar? Um, I actually don't think so. Sun's Avatar, again, is kind of part of that pad damage that I talk about, um, that everything cleaves. And although Sun's Avatar and Dawn Light damage is pretty decent in terms of... Uh, portions of your breakdown i don't think it's warranting giving up um, a full crusade for now there are a couple things that would make me change my mind on radiant glory one would be if they would fix the aurora bug so let me show you guys what i mean so i'm going to go down to the training dummy and we are going to pop our crusade and then we're going to wake of ashes and i'm going to show you guys that the aurora buff is actually going to give us stacks of crusade uh, the main problem with, with this buff is when you take Radiant Glory and you proc your immediate Divine Purpose and you spend it, it's actually not contributing to any, any stack gains. So let's go down here. Um, here is our PvP training dummy. I'm going to go ahead and just get in combat. I'm going to pop my wings so we're at one stack. Uh, we are going to Wake of Ashes and then spend one final verdict on that um, Divine Purpose proc. And as you can see, it consumed it. So now we're at four stacks. Great. Um, that seems like really good talent. I like it. It's nice. But when you go and you play um, Radiant Glory, so let's talent out of Divine Wrath. And by the way, Divine Wrath does not actually uh, function with Radiant Glory. Only regular Crusade or Avenging Wrath might. Uh, when you talent into Radiant Glory and then you go over to the target dumb here, and then let me get in combat... And then I'm just going to Wake of Ashes again here. And then I'm at one stack, and then I spend the Divine Purpose Brock, and I'm still at one stack here. If they fix the Aurora bug, and I, I assume it's a bug because it works with the regular Crusade, and so do uh, regular Divine Purpose Brocks. Um, if they fix that, then all of a sudden, I do think Radiant Glory is probably better for Herald of the Sun than regular Crusade. Um, and then also, if this bug stayed in the game, but they undid the nerfs to Crusade and Avenging Wrath Might, then I also do think Radiant Glory would be worth having, because it does give you the, that higher consistent damage with your Dawnlight procs. But 
At the moment, damage is very slow in PvP, aside from a few outliers, um, for Rep Paladin at least, uh, and that outlier is Blessing of Anshi. This is your hardest hitting ability in PvP. Um, if it crits and someone's in like 35% HP range, they are most likely going to die. It can do upwards of 1.5 to 1.8 million crits. Um, that might seem low if you play other classes on the beta, but that is the highest number that Rhett can currently crit on the beta. Um, this hits harder for the most part. It, it actually can, I'm pretty sure it can crit higher than that. I've seen it on players for like 2.2 million, I think, but in general, like during my solo shuffles, that's the typical number that I've seen. Um, Hammer of Light hits about that hard. So think about that. Our proc from Blessing of Anshi hits for about as hard as Hammer of Light. Uh, there have also been a number of buffs to Eternal Flame and Word of Glory over the past several beta builds. So Eternal Flame, we, we finally actually have some self-healing and some off-healing on Red Paladin. Eternal Flame does solid uh, initial healing and has a nice heal over time effect. And by the way, that heal over time effect can proc Blessing of Banshee, which is actually just the next thing I'm going to talk about here. So in order to get your Hammer of Wrath Blessing of Banshee proc, you need damage over time effects on the target. Um, and those damage over time effects can be your Dawn Lights, it can be your Expurgations, and it can be your Truce Wake. Uh, some of you might be wondering if the damage over time effect from Templar Strikes is able to proc it. And I sat on the dummy and I did 25 Templar Strikes, so 25 of the second, uh, I'm sorry, 25 Templar Slashes. And I sat there and I could not proc, uh, I could not proc Blessing of Anchi. But then the second that I, applied a, a um, what's it called, an Eternal Flame to myself. On the second Eternal Flame, I got a proc. And by the way, the Healing Over Time effects can proc uh, Blessing of Anchi as well. So if I just got maybe a lucky proc right here, maybe I can maybe I can proc it. I'm not entirely sure I, I have to be in combat in order to get the proc, but basically this Eternal Flame that's ticking every, every so often has a chance to uh, grant me a Blessing of Anchi. So that's pretty cool. Um, that gives Expurgation, a purpose in your rotation. So my thoughts behind that is since I have to have Expurgation on the target in order to get the most Blessing of Anshi procs anyway, I'm going to take Holy Flames, which is going to add, it says you deal 3% increased Holy Damage to targets burning from your Expurgation, but in PvP combat, for some reason, it says 5%. It could be a tooltip bug. It could not be a tooltip bug. I'm not entirely sure, but either way, um, that is why I'm playing Holy Flames and Expurgation as uh, Herald of the Sun. So let me go back to the regular build here. Um, the next thing that uh, that I'll talk about right here is going to be Crusading Strikes. So let me swap over the builds here to, where is it? Herald CS Auto Attack. Now, I think if you're not comfortable playing Templar Strikes, I think that's totally fine. Uh, they did a buff these two talents here, Heart of the Crusader and Zealot's Fervor, compared to the pre-patch build. So now they are both two talent talent points. And what that allows you to do is get more higher power uh, Crusading Strikes off. And then you're going to benefit from Seal of the Crusader a little bit more, which is why um, I do think it's a decent pair. Uh, the downside is you kind of have to pick and choose what talents that you're going to sacrifice to get these two talents. And I'm not entirely sure that it's worth picking up two points in Zealot's Fervor anyway. Because if you're ever getting kited, then this talent is virtually useless because so you auto attack, you get kited for like, I don't know, two seconds and then you can auto attack again. Um, you're not really gaining any value out of this. So I might take one point out of this and then put it in Heart of the Crusader. And then you can actually get rid of uh, the talents in Burning Crusade if you really want and add it back to Zealous Fervor. Um, it's a little more difficult to pick a blessed champion here. Uh, something that you could do. <clears throat> excuse me, you could drop one point in Heart of the Crusader, pick a bl blessed champion if you want the cleave. If you really just care about um, single target damage, then you can run something something like this. One of the reasons I like Burnt to Ash, and actually Burnt to Ash is kind of bugged right now too. Truce Wake critical strikes aren't always um, extending the duration of Truce Wake. So that's another talent bug that we have to deal with right here. But I do like Burnt to Ash because pretty much every time you're going to Wake of Ashes, that's when you're going to apply a Dawn Light. And that just means your Dawn Lights are 30% more effective on the target. Um, Burnt to Ash actually does not affect... Um, I can't remember if I uh, went over this or not. Templar Strikes. So Templar Strikes is not affected. The, the dot 
The damage over time portion of Templar Strikes is not affected by Burn to Ash. It's only affected by the initial Templar Slash. So if you hit a big crit Templar Strike, or Templar Slash rather, um, then the damage over time effect is going to be much larger. Um, I did test it between Penitence and Burn to Ash. Neither of these talents are functioning with Templar Strikes for some reason. So um, I'm not entirely sure if it's a coding or a bug issue or intended, but yeah, anything that you see on the talent tree that has to do with damage over time effects uh, does not currently function with Templar Slash. So that includes the damage over time proc chance for a Blessing of Anchi. Um, however, you know, if you're not a fan of Crusading Strikes, feel free to play my favorite build, which is playing Templar Strikes here. Um, it does hit very hard. I do like playing it, and it gives you a little bit more talent flexibility with other talent points here. And uh, your damage breakdown is going to be relatively similar. Um, I've hit upwards of 800k crits with Templar Strikes in PvP combat. That means that's about a uh, 1.2 million Templ Templar Slash if you include the damage over time portion, and even more if you include the initial strike. And then even more if you include the Blessed Champion AoE Cleave. Um, so it does hit very hard on the beta as well as the pre-patch. All right, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I want to go over with uh, with Herald of the Sun. Anything left here? Um, I don't really have a t free talent point for Judge Jury Executioner, but also um, I do want to talk a little bit about the pet problem that we have in the War Within PvP. So a lot of classes in the War Within uh, gained additional pets, um, thinking Death Knights, uh, Windwalker Monks, what else have pets now? Um, I mean, Shadow Priests have pets, stuff like that. Uh, and with those pets comes the chance that our Splash Cleave damage does not hit the, the player targets that we really want it to. And this is something I'm going to go over with Templar as well. It's, a, it's an even bigger problem on Templar. Um, but talents like Judge, Jury, Executioner... If you're fighting these pet classes, it's not always going to be uh, hitting the targets that you really want it to. And that's, that same thing goes with the um, application through the Avenging Wrath Dawn Lights. So activating your Avenging Wrath applies up to four Dawn Lights onto nearby allies or enemies and increases Dawn Lights duration by 20%. So this effect here, this can randomly go on pets instead of the targets that you really want them to go on, which does kind of suck. Um, but I mean, at least with Herald of the Sun, the Dawn Lights actually cleave everything around them as well. And they can just go on yourself. So it's not as big of a deal as it is with Empyrean Hammer. Um, Empyrean Hammer is just always going on pets. Really sucks. Um, but at least the, uh, the Dawn Lights cleave. All right. So anything else that I want to talk about here? Um... I suppose a couple flex points you have could be considered Burn Ash. If you really just want a higher consistent damage build, you could play Burning Crusade instead of Burnt Ash. Um, I don't think that's super warranted because your Expurgation damage over time effect really isn't that big. Um, you also have a pretty clear cut rotation with Herald of the Sun. Um, you're going to prioritize your Blessing of Anchi procs over everything. Um, including overcapping holy power, at least in PvP. This is because the proc can double proc, like back to back. And uh, I initially, I wasn't playing Vengeful Wrath until I, I'm sorry, I wasn't playing Vengeful Wrath and Vanguard's Momentum until I realized that that effect could happen. And I think that was like yesterday. I got two procs back to back. And the uh, Blessing of Anshi procs, it doesn't actually reset the cooldown of Hammer of Wrath like it does with... Um, a final verdict proc hammer of wrath so this would actually reset um that's why i am running vanguard's momentum right now uh your highest priority damage dealing abilities or i'm sorry generators are going to be um template strikes if you are in melee range you're gonna want to keep a blade of justice expurgation dot on the target at all times so you can proc as many blessing of anchi procs as you can um, try and hit as many final verdicts into greater judgments as you can and then obviously just Wake of Ashes on cooldown to apply the Dawn Lights. Um, just whip them out. I, I've been like, I'm in that mindset where I kind of save my damage, save my Wake of Ashes for the 10 stacks in the Crusade. You don't actually need to do that as Herald of the Sun. Um, you kind of do, you do that with Templar, but you don't really do that with Herald of the Sun. You just whip your Wake of Ashes off cooldown and you will find some pretty decent success. 
All right, so overall, um, Rhett is looking pretty good on the beta PvP wise. I'm not sure about PvE. I haven't spoiled any dungeons or done any questing or anything. Um, I'm assuming it's pretty good because it's cleave damage is really good. So maybe it's decent in delves. But if you wanted to pick up Rhett in PvP, no, it's probably not as strong as, um, as it was during Dragonflight, but it's also not nearly as weak as it was during the start of Dragonflight before the rework. It's definitely a, a solid A tier spec. It has its weaknesses, it has its strengths, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing it in the War Within. If I had a couple of um, wishes before the start of the expansion, I would really like them to um, unnerf wings, buff Final Verdict by like 10%, and then also um, I, would, I would like to humbly request Divine Protection not be a 10% wall in PvP. Um, it really doesn't do too much. Let me, let me show you guys. So if I get in PvP combat with this dummy right here, the value of Divine Protection is only 10%. So it is pretty weak. But a lot of you have been worried about um, Rhett's survivability. And I'd say it's equal to or better than Dragonflight, primarily because we get our, um, our self-healing back for, um, for the most part. And even Templar has decent self-healing. It has Sacro Sacrosanct Crusade, while um, Herald has both defensive dawn lights and eternal flames for some pretty meaty healing and then also sun's avatar will heal you as well so it's nice all right if you guys have any further questions and i'm sure i missed some talking points um, feel free to drop them below and i'll see you for my next video which actually is probably going to be it's going to be a little while i'm going on vacation um, but my next video will be the templar review i hope you guys enjoyed i'll see you next time peace